Let's start oh. with you, Jenny. Oh. Um, <laughs> he's, he's not your idea of a role model. Well, no, he's not. I, I, I see him as a symptom of a problem rather than a solution to it. I can understand. What's the problem that he's a the, symptom The of? problem is, I think, a lot of young men uh, feel that nobody is speaking up for them. In a culture where we are encouraged to have identity politics, the only identity that isn't a good identity is a young man or a young white male. He talks in a very straight way uh, and he gives straight answers to uh, some questions, which I think he, he gives very wrong answers to. Um, but I find him repellent. I think he, he talks, uh, in fact, he, talk, he basically creates straw men that he destroys. So he will uh, depict feminism as a particular kind of thing, a kind of man-hating thing, which it isn't. Well, it is um, for some feminists. Feminism, as it's written, is not man-hating. That is true. Technically, it's about equality between the genders. But, as it's practiced, it's clearly about advancing the interests of women and ensuring that women have higher positions in society. That's how it's practiced. You don't hear feminists arguing and advocating for the rights of men. They're not addressing the issues that plague men. And if they do, they're blaming men for those issues. So when men kill themselves way more than women, they blame men for that. When men get sentenced for more time in prison, they blame men for that. When men don't want to show emotion because they'll get judged by these same women, they blame men for that. When men make up more than 90% of the workplace deaths, they blame men for that. It's always the man's fault. That's how it's practiced. It's about advancing the interests of women so that women get all the privileges that men get while they get to keep their privileges. Equality plus. They want equality, but they also still want to be treated like ladies, which is a privilege. A lot of what he says about masculinity and stuff, I, I completely would sign up to, actually. Yeah. And his confidence can help people. But when he was not prepared to condemn the Taliban barbarians. for that, yeah. because that to me is an open and shut case. If you don't condemn it, then I'm afraid you've got a problem. And it's yeah. not about sending feminists in to go to war. As I pointed out to you. Which I actually do think is a valid point. <laughs> well, well it's, it's I... fine, but a lot of women do actually fight in the armed forces. Yeah. So I think, I the idea that none of them do is... is it's interesting, in the context of equality, you bring up the military. When it's the case that men have higher standards they have to meet in the military than women do. The military is the worst example to bring up if you want to talk about equality between genders. Because the standards for men are higher than women in the military. The reason for it is because if the standards for women were the same as men, there would be far less women in the military. The uncomfortable truth is real True equality might look like something you guys aren't really ready to accept. That's the truth. Do you I'm think not. he's a misogynist? I don't think he's a misogynist. No, I don't think so. I mean, a misogynist means somebody who hates women. Yeah, I, don't I don't think, think he, he hates, hates women. I do I think he hates women. I think he thinks I women think are nothing. I think he would not want, know what to do with you and I, Esther, because he does not know how to deal with A lot with of women him. do like him. Exactly. There are a lot of women who don't know him who seem yeah. to hate him, yeah. ironically. Um, but I'm not sure it's as clear I mean, as he's I a misogynist. I, I don't think he's a misogynist. And I have a brother who's probably within his target demographic, 23. And I can understand why his message would resonate with him because it's normal exactly for young men to feel like they don't have a place in Western society. And he actually makes that point. And that's why he's popular. Popular because these young men are tired of being told that they're the cause of everything wrong with society. People well, we who died millions, for them. millions of Afghan women yeah. have just been tossed back to these barbaric And service men who, who died for it. But the fact that, that he sees it, he says, oh, it's got nothing to do with me. As a human being, it yeah. should have something to do with it. As someone who says he's no, I agree. It, it I thought he was a cop out there. But albeit, again, a lot of what he says, I could imagine if I was a young man, it would resonate with me, yeah. probably for the right reasons. Like he's trying to give people confidence and the belief that being masculine is not actually a stick to beat you with, Absolutely. right? You can be a good masculine person. He used to be applauded. Um, it used to be applauded when they had use for men. And it'll be applauded if men are needed. When society needs men to rise up and lay down their lives for the greater good, suddenly we love men. Suddenly all this toxic masculinity shit goes out the window and it's like these same toxic men, you want them to go fight and go kill themselves. The demographics of the people keeping us safe in society are generally men and they also have traits that would generally be characterized as toxic. When they're needed, it's okay. Go ahead and be toxic. It's these same men that would have to register for the draft and recruit all the toxicity inside of them to go fight whatever enemy or force is challenging us. But when you're not needed and society's safe and everything's good, shut the fuck up. You're toxic. You're in the way. When everything's good again, they're disposable. <laughs> we don't need them to be toxic. They're disposable. Anyways, that was the video. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.